how would you like to have a house that you don't have to pay any utility bills? Uh, where you get your water for free, your electricity for free, free, and you handle your sewage yourself. And on top of that, you actually have your own fruits and vegetables as, as well. Uh, wouldn't that be fantastic? Now, that is what an Earthship can give to you. It's a complete off the off-grid house that is um, really more of a living organism than a house all by itself. Okay, I don't call it the project anymore because it's an experiment. <laughs> it's a project got a start and an end, but this experiment doesn't seem to end. <clears throat> now, um, I was uh, nine years in the Netherlands and I've heard about Earthships in the Netherlands. It's an American concept by an architect named uh, Mike Reynolds. Um, well, there's a movie made yeah, of him uh, uh, called The uh, Garbage that? Warrior. So, as you can imagine, it's about um, having less garbage in the world. So, using garbage as building material. This is what the Earthship is about. But it also combines a lot of other... Um, uh, elements in it and there's actually six principles that it's based on. The one is the building material, the second one is the climate control, um, the electricity that we use, um, then the last three, it's all to do with the water, the, wa the way we capture the water, the way we reuse the water, and then also what do you do with your um, sewage. So building materials, we try and use in an earthship as much as possible local material, natural material, and then also garbage. So um, this house is one of the ones where we don't mind if it gets a junk status because that's what we want. <laughs> we want the junk status. Uh, the more junk we can use to build the house, the better. Obviously, uh, we use material that's uh, usable and not just junk junk. <laughs> okay, so the foundation of this house is built on tires. We compact it, we ram it with earth. Uh, on top of that, we placed uh, earth bags. Um, in the front of the house, as you can see, we have windows with wooden frames, aluminium frames. Uh, so not everything is reusable, we use, but we do use a lot of reusable material. So the second abs uh, aspect of the Earthship is the climate control, and we, we do it naturally, natural climate control. And then we have a couple of principles. Uh, the one is uh, thermal mass, that's the biggest aspect of uh, Earthship, and that's why this house is built into the hi hill. Um, you don't always have to have a hill, but what you do then is you have a lot of um, thermal mass, a lot of earth behind your house. So the sun, if the, the house is facing north, you can use the sun to assist with the climate control. When you, if you look back at the house, you can see this little overhang, and that helps us to hide the sun in the summer, but get the maximum sun in in the winter. And that gives us what we um, call thermal gain. So in the winter, you get thermal gain. If you go now into, it's now autumn, but if you go into the house, you'll feel it's nice and hot inside the house. Um, and uh, the thermal mass helps to keep it natural. Um, the climate. So then we also use uh, another aspect and that is ventilation. Um, you can see behind the windows, top windows you can open so heat rises and it can go out of the house. So if you want um, to keep the heat inside you'll close those windows. Uh, other aspect that we all know about is uh, insulation. Um, so the ceiling, there's a lot of insulation material in the ceiling. We use uh, also second hand uh, polystyrene also on top of the ceiling um, to give us more ins uh, insulation. The windows at the bottom is also double glazed, so that also give us uh, insulation. So that way, with those four aspects, we can uh, provide a more constant, uh, nicer environment without using any electricity for that. Um, 
And the reason we want to use as little possible electricity is because the house is completely off grid and the, the electricity is only by sun. So uh, we use solar power on top of the roof. You can see there's nine panels that gives you about two kilowatts of um, energy every hour. So we can get almost, uh, well, if there was no losses, we'll get 12 kilowatt hours per day, but we get between 10 and 11. In, on a cloudy day, it'll be only be six, and sometimes even on a rainy day, we only get about two kilowatt hours. Now, kilowatt hours, those units that you get paid, uh, that you have to pay for. Now, um, the Earthship is actually a house where you don't have any utility bills. So we don't pay for electricity, we don't pay for water, we don't pay for sewerage. So those things uh, we don't pay for, um, but obviously it doesn't necessarily mean the house is less expensive than another house, because uh, those things um, is add cost initially. And also our system, solar system, use batteries so that we have power at night. And that means and, and batteries need to be replaced uh, every couple of years. So that ne doesn't necessarily mean our electricity is completely for free. Our water, however, is, is, re uh, is uh, it's only water from heaven. Um, and we have 40 kiloliters of uh, water that we can capture. So um, now the tanks, tanks currently is around about 80% full and the 40 kiloliters. Now, if we use around about a kiloliter, and that's once again the unit that you pay for um, per week. And the reason we use a lot less than other people is because we don't have big uh, grass outside, lots of lawns outside um, that needs a lot of water. A lawn can easily um, use one kilo liter of water per hour. So if we use that amount in a whole week. And that way you use a lot less uh, water. We also reuse the water. The water that we capture from rain, we use four times. The first time it's for drinking purpose, washing purpose, and it's all types of washing, dishwashers, clothes washing, and yourself. That water is then gray water once it's used. The gray water normally is in a normal house will just go to waste and they have to try and maintain it and clean it and whatever. We use that water for an inside planter where we have we actually, and that's the, the fourth aspect of the thing, that we have a planter that can actually feed us. You'll see now that we have lots of, well, tomatoes are coming up uh, great now. And so we have tomatoes, spinach, and green peppers currently. Those are things that I found that works uh, best inside, and we can have a lot of that, and we can sort of, on a natural way, um, maintain the insects in the house. We also have uh, butternuts and things like that as well. It also grow very well. Butternuts is quite an interesting thing, all pumpkin types. I have to pollinate the, the, the flowers myself with a little brush. Uh, if you don't do that, um, the female flowers won't actually become pumpkins. <laughs> a lot of people think that if you have ground, if you have earth, if you, you can just become a farmer. That's not the case. To be a farmer is a way of life. It is not just something that you have and then the things grow by itself. It needs regular attention, not necessarily 24 hours, but you have to make sure. The lucky thing here is the water is always perfect. We have a lot, because we use the gray water and the planter is like in a swimming pool, sort of. Um, um, not quite a swimming pool, but the water doesn't disappear. It stays there. And then the water will drain to the other end. 
So the, the plants don't get too much water, as also don't get too little water, but you have to control it. You have to look at it on a daily basis, make sure that the plant do have enough water. Another thing, like I said, you have to look at the insects. You must make sure the insects uh, doesn't kill your plants. So, and I use only natural ways to do it. I use um, things like basil, I use um, khaki boss and uh, um, tobacco and things like that, that, that I make my own mixture and I spray it on the plants. It won't harm the plants, it won't, um, it just keeps the insects away. They don't like khaki boss and they don't like tobacco. Like I said, I mean, those are only four types of um, vegetables that I do produce. Uh, and um, so those four is not really enough. You'll have to do more than that if you really want to go subsistence. Um, uh, you'll have to look at some other permaculture um, um, methods and things like that as well. Maybe to include some goats and so that you have a little bit of meat and milk and other things like that. So to us it's only a supplement, it's extra. Um, but yeah, the tomatoes, for instance, if you look at the tomatoes, I just take, if we buy tomatoes uh, sometimes, um, you can actually just take those seed and I put it in egg carton. So you just put the seeds in that, let it dry, and, you, and then one of those little cups you just take out and put it in the ground just like that. And then I just water it and see, um, and then I make sure that only three of them, I pull the others out and only three come up, and it makes lovely stools. Um, um, very high, up to two, two and a half meters high. It comes with full of tomatoes, and that seed doesn't cost you anything. Um, there's certain things that you can't do it with, but tomatoes you can do it with. You can't do it with green peppers, for instance, because the green peppers, they use hybrids. So the green pepper that you buy in the store won't necessarily give you exactly the same one. It might give you a, um, a hot pepper, and you don't want a hot pepper. So they mix it, the seeds. Um, so when it comes to uh, green peppers, I actually go and buy the seeds. but Spanish, if you leave your spinach long enough, it actually can give you seed as well. I haven't done that. I also buy the seeds. But a packet of seeds cost you, what, 20 rand, and one, just one serving of spinach costs you 10 rand or 20 rand. So you save a lot and lot of money um, on your vegetables if you do it yourself. But yeah, it's not necessarily easy. You have to um, be willing to do that, but you can do it, and that's the thing. Yeah, we do it with free water. The planter is like a swimming pool. The water goes in one side and it drains to the other side. It goes at a slope. Okay, so at the place we can call it a well of about a meter deep and there's a pump there, and that water, it's now already strained and filtered through the um, roots of the plants, and it's fairly clean. It's uh, it looks like water, I won't drink it, but it looks clear, it's, it's crystal clear. That water we use to rinse the toilet, okay. So the first time we use it is for drinking and washing, the second time is for the planter inside and our vegetables. The, the water the plants don't use, we use uh, for, to, to um, rinse the toilet to flush the toilets, a better English word. And that water that goes from the, comes from the toilet we call black water. Now the black water goes to a septic tank and the septic tank is normally connected to a French drain. The French, on top of the French drain, we have a couple of trees. Behind my back you'll see there's two um, pecan trees and um, um, I don't have great success with the pecans at this stage, but as they grow older, we'll have uh, more and more success. I'll have a, I do have a couple of um, pecans can take up to five to 10 years to really uh, give you a good uh, harvest. So that is actually the, the, the whole concept of the water. The water is captured on the, on the roof, it is stored, and um, in the tanks, it is then filtered. We filter the water four times um, before we drink it. Wash water becomes gray water. 
that the plants can use. It goes to the, um, the well where we use it to rinse the toilet. The toilet water goes out to a septic tank and from the septic tank it actually um, provides water for the outside planter. And that's in principle the six, uh, that's, that's a sixth principle of the earthship. So I'll just re recap on that. It's the building material, the climate, natural climate control, the um, um, air power, sun power, solar power, the capturing of the rain, the reuse of the, the water with, for the planter, for the toilet, and then finally, um, where we uh, do our own septic, uh, our own sewerage system. So, yeah, all our utilities, we don't pay a cent on, on a monthly basis. So, yes, your monthly, monthly rates came down tremendously. Most municipality, unfortunately, wants to give you um, all the services because that's how they make their money. And um, luckily we don't have that problem here. But um, in normal municipalities, I think the thinking should be a little bit different. The municipality should give you the utilities that you want, not the other way around. They must ask you, do you want it? And then they give it to you. I can understand like sewerage can become a problem if people just let the sewerage run anywhere. Okay, um, but if you can prove that you can handle it, and same with electricity. Uh, I can um, very easily, we're actually running a company from here. We have a, a, a IT company running from the Earthship here. Uh, for, um, so I have, currently we have three programmers working on the sun power. Normal people use twice this amount of power that we use. Uh, we have backup. Uh, when it's very cloudy, we use, uh, we have a solar geyser there, but we have a gas geyser as backup. We use it twice or three times a year when it's really cloudy for three or four days. We also have a gas plate, two gas plates. So if the sun power is not enough for um, to drive the electricity plates, uh, electrical plates, we can use gas as backup. So as soon as it becomes cloudy, I use that because I prefer using electricity for things like computers and TVs and things that you can't drive with gas um, for that. So we need to come, so you have to manage it a little bit. In conclusion, an earthship, you don't have to build a complete earthship to use some of the aspects of this, the earthship. You can have a grey water cell where you can put it actually outside your house where you can grow your plants your vegetables, where you use your grey water system. You don't have to have an earthship to have a solar power system. You can add it to a normal house. So that would be my story to you. Make use of the concept of the earthship, the six principles, without even changing your house, just adding small pieces of it that can make you more independent and actually give the earth a better chance for survival.